Hi Tappers! Do you have the mindset that the harder something is, the better your results will be? I could walk for exercise, but if I run, oh, it'll be so much better. Ooh, what if I run with ankle weights? Yeah! Oh, what if I lunge run? I know, I'll hop. I'll hop for 20 miles, no weight. Back handsprings! But then you don't know how to do back handsprings, so it feels too overwhelming. And by that point, walking sounds completely lame. So even though it's entirely doable, you give up. Because why bother with something that will take up so much time and give such lame results? We have this belief in our culture these days that harder equals better. And it's held up because sometimes it's absolutely true, but not in everything. This trend has become too ubiquitous and it's now creating confusion and issues in places where it doesn't necessarily belong. Now, I tend to have a lot of excitement towards forward movement. I like to dig in and take a lot on and go. This has led me falling into a common pitfall. Instead of self-helping, I'm more self-shoving. Now, we know what self-help is supposed to be, but what do I mean by self-shoving? I mean pushing beyond what the subconscious agrees to. A shove is a strong push that knocks someone off balance. The key is off balance. Strong pushes can be highly beneficial and exciting to engage, but they also need large amounts of support in order to avoid imbalance and backlash. And oddly enough, when you push hard but have a lot of support, the difficulty of it goes way down. It isn't nearly as hard. Imagine, say, shoving a willing participant on a sled down a snowy hill. That's fun, and while it might be challenging, you still manage to do it over and over again. But how about getting your large dog into the tub for a bath or into the vet's office? No support there. It's a grueling task. So let's apply this thought train to you and your trauma, overwhelm, current blocks in your life. Where you are stuck likely feels really hard. It's meant to. That's how it generates all of the stress chemicals that you need to remain in trauma slash stress slash overwhelm mode. Those modes are what keep you alert and can only be kept in that state when the brain receives signals that you are in a tough spot. So how do you triumph over this hard space with a bigger, tougher, harder tool, right? This is where it gets messy and untrue. You can't release trauma by traumatizing it. You can't outviolence violence. You can't make hatred go away by hating it so much more than it hates you. But we are taught to fight. Fight for freedom. Fight for rights. Fight for what's yours. So naturally, it seems like a fight to reclaim ourselves from trauma, pain, abuse, fear, anger, hardship is the only way to go. But it isn't. You can't outfight the subby. It will always grow to meet the challenge. But you can give it a different message, and it's one that it actually likes too. You can tell it that the fight for something is over. That fight to remain valid while you were a child is over. That fight to survive that abusive relationship is past. That fight to sink so far inwards that they can't hurt you right now isn't necessary anymore because they are no longer around. EFT is called emotional freedom technique because of how it draws attention to the emotional fights that you've conquered because you survived and allow them to leave. But it's so simple. It's so simple that it feels suspect. It feels hokey, like someone telling you to buy this gold-colored bar of soap and every time you bathe with it, you will draw money to you. When we are in fight or flight mode, we are naturally looking for the next fight. When we encounter something that isn't, and we aren't sure what to make of it, we tend to feel discomfort, hesitant, cautious. With tapping, this is a good thing. This is your brain paying attention to the present 
and it may be the first time you have been present for a while. Releasing trauma doesn't have to be hard. You've done the hard part. You survived. Let the releasing be easy. There are now years of research and hundreds of thousands of successful sessions that show it really can be quick, easy, and simple. And if tapping feels hard, I suggest reaching out to a clinically certified practitioner to show you how to peel the layers off effectively. I'll see you soon.